Hi, we're making Byford's recipe scones here. What we've got in the bowl that Kate's working with is 115 grams of unsalted butter. And how much flour have you put into that? Um, I've got put 500 grams in, but I've got to put another 200 grams in in a minute. But I couldn't actually fit the whole amount in my uh, scales. Need a bigger bowl. So I need no in the scales. Right. I've got to weigh out 200 grams. And more. it's self-raising flour. Self-raising flour, yeah. So what we're doing now is working the flour into. <laughs> The butter or the butter into the flour and the flour is warm but the butter is very cold it's just come out of the fridge we've just slightly softened that with the microwave for about five seconds but it's still going to be quite a long mix this because what we've got to get here is a lovely crumbly mixture where all that butter's worked into a fine crumb with all the flour i just wonder if i'm going to need more butter mm, Maybe doesn't I've seem an awful lot of butter it doesn't i wonder if i've misread the recipe have have traditional old recipes it's usually around four ounces of butter to a pound of flour isn't it i might reread the recipe yeah, we'll check it in grams in a bit because that's going to be quite a dry mix, I think, by the time you it's work very it. Dry. Just see I what it looks I like. I haven't added all the flour yet. So Keep very, going, and we'll come back when dry. she's got all the flour in and all the butter worked in. See what it's looking like. Just adding the rest of the flour. Well, we've worked the uh, butter into the flour. It's got a lovely fine crumb now. We're just putting the final two hundred grams of self-raising flour in. We've checked the recipe against the old Hamlin cookbook, the old Faithful, and. The mixture is more or less equivalent in terms of the ratio of flour to uh, butter. It's going to make a nice big batch. So it's going to make a huge batch, this. It's gorgeous. It's very therapeutic doing this. What this recipe has in that we don't normally put in is egg. And it's also going to have some lemon zest and some mixed spice. Which... It's supposed to have orange zest in, but we haven't got any oranges. Well, so we this... have got Norfolk lemons, so they're going in. <laughs> this is a lockdown recipe. How many lemons do you have to zest to put in this mix? Well, it's supposed to have one orange, but I think I'll just put one lemon in because lemon's stronger than orange, I think, the flavour. Yeah. Tell you I'll what, just go I'll go one. and get you one. There you go. That's going to make it a special recipe, isn't it? Picking these straight off the tree in May in England. Not something everybody's going to be able to do, but we do have that luxury with this old conservatory. These trees come in every year and produce these beauties for us. Not big, not juicy because we have to keep them on the dry side over winter, but that one's going in this scone mix. Okay, so all the flour's gone into that mix now, and we're left with a lovely fine crumb with all the butter worked beautifully into that flour. Kate's just now going to add half a teaspoon of mixed spice. We've also got 160 grams of sugar. I've used in caster sugar. Caster sugar, yeah. So that goes into the mix. Just mix that in. have to get an egg ready next. It smells amazing already with the mixed spice. Do not over mix, it says in this. Just mix until <laughs> okay. it is combined. Yeah, I like the mixing. Well, you haven't got everything in yet. Yeah. I think that's when you've got everything okay. in it saying that. Right. So, okay. Okay, we've got all our remaining ingredients ready. We've got the lemon that we've come from the fresh lemon tree. And we're just taking the zest off that straight into the mix. We've been growing these this lemon tree for years. And it's finally fruiting, which is lovely. We've got it in a conservatory and it loves it in there. It's usually gin and tonic cherry. But this... Yeah, this is the new use for it. So all that lemon zest going into the bowl. We're confident these are unwaxed. <laughs> oh no, oh, yes they are, of course they are. We grew them. <laughs> and chemical free. I've never put scones in there. I'm sorry, I've never put lemon in a scone recipe before. Yeah. Actually, this will. My grandma used to. With that mixed spice. Oh. Give you that characteristic. I'm not getting flavor. too much pith. Ah, no, keep going. That's smelling beautiful. What are you going to use the rest of the lemon for? I think uh, I've just about got it all. Let me think of something. It's a lovely little tool, this, for zesting a yeah, lemon. It is nice. It's really cute. I can't remember where we got having. it. Can you? I don't know. It's really cute. Right, so lemon zest is in now, off one lemon. Um, here we've also got the two hundred. <laughs> 35 mils of milk and the whole egg, which we're just going to beat up. All that goes into the mix. And now we're starting to make the dough mixture. Milk so, next. just half the milk, I'd say, first off, and then work that in. Should I get a wooden spoon? Into a crumb again. No, I'd use your hands. Really? You're going to get messy at this stage. I think I'll go for a wooden spoon. It's going to take twice as long. <laughs> oh, she's going for a big one. <laughs> could be a very long video here we go just half the milk in 
I'm going to mix that in. in. I give you about 30 seconds before you give up and start using your fingers. Well, I'll just fold it in because it could get Don't very messy. Don't put all of it in because you're not sure so, if you're going to need it all. Oh, okay. Keep a little back just so you can judge the mix. Uh, very the dry mix. mixture. Well, we what you want to do is work that through it? into a crumb again and really get it throughout everything. I think. And you only squash it together and combine the whole thing at the end. It's very dry. I think it can definitely take more milk. Yeah, just keep working, keep working. Can I not put, can I not put the rest of the milk in? Don't go on then. <laughs> Determined to put <laughs> full amount of milk in. Ah, oh, right. I'd be a little cautious because the egg's gone in, which is extra liquid. It was quite a small so, yeah. egg there, it wasn't a big egg. Don't was squash it? it together, keep the air you in want it. Me to keep yeah, it? break it up, that's right. Work all the moisture right the way through it. You can tell who's just gone maker in our house. Keep it as a crumb. <laughs> and you'll get a feel for it, and you'll know when that's ready, and it's going to, once you squeeze it, combine into a dough when you've got enough liquid in it. But you just got to keep going until you reach that. Really oh, should have nice. taken that ring off, dear. I know, it's covered in scum mixture. Oh, I know, it's had silly. Good way to get a shine on a diamond. <laughs> what? It's a good way not to. Scone down, yeah. It's scone down the back of it. Not great for the back. Right, so she's working this really nicely. How's it feeling? It feels lovely. Very therapeutic. Do you think if you squeeze that's going to stick together and form a dough, or is it still too dry? I have absolutely no idea. Do you want to stick my hand in and tell you? <laughs> You'll know when it's ready. There's more fluid in it. If you it's no, that's still. I'd say that's dry. I think you, you need, need to. Need, oh no! I've got to add it now. Put I'm more afraid, milk in. Preferred adding it. It's all right. It's cool. Go in. And work that in, and then see what oh, you think I after. I know it'll stick stick a bit, but keep going, and then it'll dry off your fingers. Who thought? Who knew baking was so relaxing? Saying nothing. <laughs> Well, that's coming together quite nicely now. If you've got um, an automatic mixer, a KitchenAid or something, you can use that to do this, oh, apparently. to do it by hand. Apparently they're very good for doing that sort of thing. Whoops! Oh, keep it in the bowl, dear. Oh dear, we've wasted some. Right. That's quite wet. You think it's going to stick yeah, together? Just know. get a little bit and squeeze it together and see what happens. So it's got a... Basically, no, still quite still, crumbly. It still looks like digestive biscuits. Milk. You're right. You need the rest of that milk. Can I put May it need all a in? bit more. Yeah, put it all in. Work that through completely. Oh, it's horrible when you put the milk in. It's so cold. I wonder if the milk's supposed to be at room temperature. Really. And the last ingredients that we're going to put in here is just the side there. Is the fruit? Oh, we haven't put the fruit in. Well, oh, we're supposed no, to you put can that in put before. Put that in once you. Once you know this crumb is nice and going to stick together, that's the time to put the fruit in so it's mixed we evenly fruit, throughout so it. So we're going to have to stop and weigh the fruit. We will. It did say on the recipe to put you the keep fruit mixing, in when it was I'll dry. weigh the fruit. Right, well Kate's been working this mixture and it's nice and moist now in a crumb and in goes the fruit. 115 grams. Oops, I to work it through the mixture. We were supposed to add it when it was dry but we forgot. But it should be okay. Put the rest in and then you need to start mashing this into a solid block of dough. All the fruit, that's oh, it. Best bit. Okay, okay it looks right. like it's distributed. Start squeezing it together. And all that into a solid ball of <laughs> it's dough. It's quite now. wet. <laughs> we can always put a little bit more flour on if it starts sticking to everything. It's probably going to need flouring to roll out, isn't it? Yeah, just a bit. It says in the recipe not to over mix it, so if you are doing it in a food processor, it's probably best to keep an eye on it, not walk off and leave it and forget about it, which is the sort of thing I would probably do. Well, you'd hear it because a solid oh, it would go ball boom, that boom. weight going around it. Would oh, it's forming a nice ball. The ball off. Right. It's forming a lovely ball, right. actually. Yep, you want it as Perfect. a solid dough that you can roll out, so keep going, pushing it down. It says the heat of your hand sort of make it more... It'll melt the flour and melt the butter. butter mix, yeah. Go on, roll all that fruit back into it. Oh, this, I'll see if it was in your food mixer now, you'd know about it, wouldn't you? Making a banging noise. Oops. Is that enough? It does say not to over. Well, I still think that's, work it. that needs pushing down into a more solid ball. I think if you try rolling that at the moment, it's going to break apart into. It's still quite. How do I get it to merge just work it. together then? Yeah, just squeeze it. You can put it into two small blocks because it's quite you're probably. It's big. It's a massive quantity. It's a big amount of dough, that. What, you need to put some weight on it? Yeah. Like you're kneading bread. Yeah. That looks good now. That looks like a proper dough mix. Okay, Ugh. you're probably ready to start <gasps> rolling that out now then. Okay. okay. Oh, we clean the cookie. We've moved over onto the uh, kitchen table now to start rolling the scone mix out. 
We're going to flour the uh, the tray that we're going to cook them on in the argo. Using this uh, Tesco's value self-raising flour, which is the only thing we've got in the house. There we go. Right. Now to get the dough out ready. Spread the flour back a little bit. That's fine. Okay, here comes the dough. Oh, I forgot to flour my roll in here. Don't think that's going to stick to that. Really? Get a bit okay. of Right, we're going to roll this dough out now too. Quite a thick mixture. <laughs> Is that about right? Yeah, work it both <laughs> ways. You don't want it splitting up. You want Should to try and keep it, it together. You want it a little thick. That's, Should hmm. I turn it now? No, keep going. It shouldn't I'm stick with the flour you put to on. It's starting to stick to the top now. A bit more flour on the top, I'd say. Okay. Just a little bit, not too much, because you want to be able to glaze this in a minute. Right, that's, that's about an inch thick, two really? centimetres. You're going to take that? it thinner than that. Take it a bit thicker. I like big scones though, don't I? You do. I do like a big scone. Go on, that'll do. Right, now select your cookie cutter. How big are you going to have them? Ooh. ooh, decisions, decisions. That, ooh, that is huge. Is that too big? Yeah, that is far too big. Well, I'll make some big ones with some little ones, because I do like, I love a bifid scone and they're huge. That's not a scone, that's a meal. Is it? Is that too big? I would go for... The next size down. No, I'd say the one that you should use is the one that's missing out of that too. Which is probably means you didn't put it away last time uh, you baked. <laughs> right, one domestic later. We still haven't found the right cookie cutter, so we're going for the big ones. This. Oh, have I done it the right way around? Yeah, just... Work them a little round, that's it. Okay, keep going. What, don't pull it out now? No, 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 keep cutting them. Oh, right. As close as you can, so you don't have to roll it out too many times. Oh, it's quite hard. Oh, oh, am I going to stress my enamel table? No, I've had this done on it hundreds of times. Oh, you probably could have scratch it though, if you think about it. Oh dear, now it wants to come out. How many do you think you're going to get out of that? At least another two after that, so that should be Let's have a look seven. at them. Yeah. That's quite a chunky uh, scone, isn't it? Pretty good. So what do I, should I just move yeah. the flour around? Is that too much flour put on no, there? No, you just want a good surface of flour so they don't stick really? to it. That's it. And so we're going to glaze them once they're on there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Glaze them all in one go. Let's get these ones out of the way and onto the tray. Give you an idea. That one's a bit messy. I need to press harder on the cutter. It's quite, I wonder if I've made them too That's big. That's because, well, sometimes when you hit the fruit, the cutter sort of pulls it through rather than cutting through. Is that enough through. of a gap between them? So they're not gonna Yeah, they're join gonna come any, upwards, they're not gonna go each outwards. Other. They don't go out. Right, so we've got seven out of that first roll. What we're gonna do now is combine all the dough again. And when we've got that rolled back out, I'm just gonna have to roll, we'll roll, roll the remain and cut them. Right, we've got 10 and a half scones out of that mix and now we've got a beaten egg which we're just going to glaze the top of each scone with a little bit of the whisked egg mix this is a whole egg mix we found this recipe on instagram i just happened to look on byford's instagram page because i love their scones i thought i wonder if i could ask them to send me the recipe and actually they'd shared the recipe on their instagram page so i thought why not I don't make I don't make scones very often. Last time I made scones was about five years ago. <laughs> Mike makes the scones in our house, so this is a very special treat, bank holiday treat. Me baking. I'm going to recreate the whole Byford's experience. <laughs> going to try. Jams, creams. Yep, I am. Nice pot of tea. Yep. Okay. While I sit Done. around and get served. Right there now, we go. let's put them in the oven. Let me just check the temperature. <laughs> you haven't got much choice there. <laughs> well, oh, do you think did it go in the baking oven? No. Wrong. No, bake at 160 degrees oh. for 25 minutes until golden and cooked in the centre. Well, that's where we would definitely disagree. Well, this is not you cooking, this is I me cooking. I would whack these into the top roasting oven of the saga. So, oh, that's okay. this is a real experiment now. Oh, um, wrong oven. Okay, dog. Dog, move. Just pause a minute while I'm... Here we go. She's going to bake them. She's not going to roast them. They're going in the baking oven. Okay, we had to move a large dog out of the way. Oh, didn't it? What did it say? In the, middle. In the top. Oh. Is it... Wow. Well, right, we'll set a timer. 25 minutes. 25 minutes. That's a long cook for us. Go on, let's see how we go. Okay, we'll see you later. 
Right, time is up. So they've had the 25 minutes in the baking arga. We don't think they're ready yet. So Kate's going to get them out and have a look. And we're probably going to put them into the, uh, the roasting arga oven. Alexa, the stop timer. the timer. Yeah, they're definitely not cooked yet. I'd rotate them round, Kate, so that this end goes in the uh, the front. That's it. Okay, it looks like the Argo isn't hot enough. It's supposed to be 160 degrees. Alexa, just getting a little bit of colour on the timer. top, but nowhere near done. So and let's pop try them. Try for 10 minutes in the uh, hot I'd oven. This check them the after top, five. Top right oven. This is it's supposed to be the roasting oven. You think they're going to be too high in there? No, no, no. Should yeah. go in the top of a roasting oven. I was a bit wary of putting there them in go. here because this is a very, very hot oven. Let's have a look in five minutes. See what they're looking like. Okay, well we've had an extra five minutes in the roasting oven. Let's see what they're looking like now. Oh yeah. Beautiful. That's it. I think that's perfect. How exciting. So that's pretty good. Mm. So yeah, let's get them onto a cooling rack. Okay, I have to find the cooling rack. And get them ready to I eat. Might be some time. <laughs> Quite solid. I don't think they've risen very well. Are you recording this? Yeah. I th we used quite old self-raising flour, which is what we had in. But uh, I think they should have probably risen a bit more than this. I probably should have added a bit of baking powder to them, thinking about it. So they are quite solid. Okay, we'll just leave them now to cool for about 10 minutes, and then we can eat them.